Greetings and welcome, I'm Ash, and as you might know, Dark Souls 3 is an incredibly difficult game, but it isn't an unfair one, and if you take the time to learn its intricacies, you will find an impressive world to explore. One that's filled with all sorts of wondrous locations and challenging fights that will leave you eternally yearning for more. So if this is your first rodeo with the Souls series, or if you are simply looking for a couple of pointers to help you along, allow me to present you in a spoiler-free way the 12 most important things one should know when starting Dark Souls 3. The starting class in Dark Souls 3 only determines your initial stat distribution and which weapons you start with, so it's important to choose the one that fits your playstyle or you might just end up with a bunch of wasted skill points. The best choice for beginners would either be the Knight, which has the objectively best melee oriented stats, or the Cleric, which gives you an extra method of regenerating health and curing negative effects such as poison with no further stat investment required. Personally, I would recommend the Cleric, even if you don't plan to do a faith build, simply because you get access to a wide variety of useful spells that manage to remain useful throughout the entire game. I know this one sounds a bit crazy, especially if you're a beginner as you know full well you're going to get hit a lot, but leveling Vigor aka health early on in Dark Souls 3 will not save your life. What will save your life, however, is leveling your primary damage stats, such as Strength or Dexterity, because the difference between killing an enemy in two blows, or three blows, is the difference between them having a chance to react or not. The second stat you want to focus heavily on, especially early in your playthrough, is Endurance, which increases your maximum stamina, thus allowing you to chain more attacks on the enemy, dodge more often, and overall be a lot more flexible in fights. Shields are an excellent tool when it comes to protecting your squishy parts from the enemy's pointy bits, but sometimes the enemies are so aggressive or so powerful that your shield will turn into a disadvantage. This is most apparent against some of the bigger bosses, as they will drain your entire stamina meter and sometimes even stagger you if you decide to block even half of their attack combo. In these scenarios, you will have to rely on your dodging skills in order to secure an opening during which you can attack the boss. This might sound easy on paper, but it will take you a lot of practice before you become proficient at it. While I can't help you practice, I can tell you that your dodge roll has a certain amount of invincibility frames tied to it, or in other words, a period of time during which you are completely invulnerable to damage. It's not the easiest thing to notice on your own, especially if you're new to the game, but it's a feature that you should use frequently and to great effect. Instead of dodging away from enemies doing their big swing, dodge into them, use the invincibility frame to soak the damage and then stab them in the shins while they're completely exposed. Some bosses are so ruthlessly aggressive that it's almost impossible to find enough time to actually hit them, especially if you use a slow weapon. In this case, you will have to create an opportunity for yourself by baiting a specific attack and then bringing down the hammer. For example, the very first boss in the game tends to do a lot of wild swings in close range and due to his large upper body, it is very hard to see what he is doing. But if you run away from him, he will almost always use the same two attacks, attacks that you can easily dodge away from and then punish. The same applies to healing during combat, you don't want to simply chug your bottle of Sunny D while the boss is staring you down, just waiting for you to lower your guard. Instead, bait him into a long attack chain, dodge backwards and then take a couple of sips while the boss flails around wildly. It might look terrifying, but it is the only way to ensure that you heal without losing even more health in the process. Dying on a boss can be infuriating, especially if you have to clear hundreds of his minions before you reach him once more. Well, what if I told you there isn't a single boss in the entirety of Dark Souls 3 that you can't reach within 30 seconds of dying? The way you do this is deceptively simple, just run. As long as you don't fist bump every enemy you pass, they will all waste their precious time trying to attack someone that is no longer there, and in the process allow you to get so far ahead they will never be able to catch you. The only thing you need to worry about is your stamina, which needs to never hit rock bottom given that it will then take a lot longer before it starts recharging. The importance of upgrading your favorite weapons cannot be overstated, as they don't just gain more damage, they gain increased scaling as well, which results in far, far more damage than what it says on the proverbial tin. Besides simply upgrading your gear, you can also infuse it with various gems depending on your preference. Some gems will make your gear scale better with strength, others with luck, and some will remove scaling altogether in favor of a larger base damage. It is going to be up to you and your build to decide which infusion is the right one for your weapon, and don't worry if you end up hating it as replacing an infusion is a relatively simple process. 
Undead Bow Nash is a rare item found throughout the world and increases the efficiency of your Estus Flask, and it's also an item that Dark Souls 3 never ever mentions to you. The way you use it is by going to the main bonfire in Firelink Shrine and then selecting the option to burn the ash, which will then permanently upgrade your Estus Flask. It is just as simple as it sounds, but it is very easy to overlook. I won't spoil where exactly you can find Bone Ash, because searching for them is half the fun, but I will say there is one located in the Undead Settlement, so happy hunting! Dark Souls 3 has a ton of doors that are either locked from one side or require a special key to open, so it is very easy to forget their existence and go through the entire game without finding some of the more interesting secret areas. In other words, every time you buy a key from the Handmaiden or get one as a drop, make sure to read its description to figure out where it's supposed to go, because that is your ticket to some amazing loot. The 20,000 Souls key the Handmaiden sells is a prime example of this as it gives you access to a veritable bounty of items found atop the Firelink Shrine, so as soon as you get enough souls to buy it, I would recommend you do so. Don't invest all of your souls into a single stat point as its efficiency goes down once you reach a certain threshold. While the community still hasn't done research on every single stat point, I can tell you that Strength and Dexterity have a soft cap at 40, after which every single point will be less effective than those that came before it. In other words, while it's a great idea to have a focused build, don't overdo it or you might just end up wasting stat points. On a similar note, using your weapon in two hands effectively doubles your strength, so if you're like me and prefer using giant two-handed swords, you will only need 20 to 25 strength, as that means you have an effective 40 to 50 strength, which is right at the cap before the effectiveness starts falling off rapidly. While it might not feel very heroic to run away from a difficult engagement, it's often a good idea to either reposition yourself or simply hide around a corner in order to chug Estus in safety. This is especially important during some of the ambushes Dark Souls 3 prepares for you, battles where you get quickly surrounded by enemies from all sides. Instead of dying like a noble hero, it is much preferable to run away and fight the enemies one by one, ideally in a tight space where their numbers won't bring an advantage. Not only does an ember effectively double your health, it also allows you to summon other players via signs on the floor in order to help you out with a tough fight, or even enemy players that may have invaded you. Bear in mind, however, that the number of embers available to you is limited, so you don't want to waste them for no reason, but if you do ever get stuck, don't hesitate to pop one, they are not that rare. Oh, and did I mention that embers give you a sweet flaming cloak, as if you needed even more reasons to use them? We've all been there at one point in Dark Souls 3. You're fighting a tough boss and nothing you do seems to work, as you slowly get increasingly more frustrated with transitions into overly aggressive plays, which then get punished even harder, thus continuing the cycle until you feel like quitting. While this might sound a bit patronizing, it is important to recognize that you're stuck in this downward spiral of despair and simply snap out of it. This can mean either exploring some other zone for a while, finding the boss in co-op, or simply turning off the game for a few hours, or anything else that might help you get your edge back. Just make sure to not give up, because overcoming these seemingly impossible challenges is the beauty of Dark Souls 3, as there is simply no better feeling in the entire world than pushing through hell itself in order to see yourself stand victorious. And there you have it, all 12 things I believe newcomers to Dark Souls 3 should keep in mind, for the sake of their gameplay performance and sanity as well. The most important thing you should keep in mind, however, is that becoming good at anything, and this includes Dark Souls 3, is not an easy task. You will fail, you will die, you will die a lot. But once you finally get over that difficulty hump and the gameplay mechanics become second nature, you will witness something truly amazing, so make sure to persevere. Thank you guys for listening, and if you enjoyed this, or even if you didn't, please do let me know, and if you would like to see more, you can either subscribe here, or you can check out the website link down below, that one tends to be updated a bit more frequently. With all of that said, I hope you guys have a nice day, and I will see you soon, see ya!